reading books connects you to a larger community outside of yourself and outside of your time and place and culture. It's critical. It's critical for the mind. It's critical for generating imaginative new thoughts, for solving problems, for learning about the world. Oh, is this like that painting? Like, this is not a pipe. Oh, yes. I think what's really special about the independent bookstore is that you get this sense of curation. They actually have people who believe in the books behind them. I grew up in this area as a little kid coming to Kepler's and now we bring our daughter to Kepler's and um, she asks to come here. Kepler's benefits the community as a gathering place by bringing in a tremendous variety of speakers that people may not otherwise be able to hear and meet and converse with. All of a sudden I realized, oh my god, you can get free entertainment by going to bookstores and watching these amazing authors that you love will come to the bookstore and like sit right in front of you and read the book. And it's amazing. Events here not just help people figure out what they think, but who they are. What they do, I mean, they don't clearly don't do it for money. They do it out of passion. The events were free and open to the public until probably 12, 15 months ago. Anybody could walk in, sit down, and listen. But with the downturn in the profitability of book sales, the money is just not there to have an enterprise like that. It's been um, difficult and painful to see this moment of history where this amazing institution in our country, the independent bookstore, is under so much tremendous financial duress. All those activities in the in the community are really nonprofit endeavors, and and the the financial structure just isn't there any longer. Seventy-five percent of the independent bookstores in this country have gone out of business. They've gone bankrupt. They couldn't figure out a way to compete. The model that that we've been in uh, running our business for all these years really is no longer a viable model. I picked up the phone and I called Praveen Madan. Praveen and Kristen were successful at turning around Booksmith in San Francisco and creating uh, Berkeley Arts and Letters, building upon what Clark has done over 30 years. Praveen has brought together a team to pull together this vision that has both the business grounding and the heart. We felt that nobody was really taking the bull by the horn and saying, how am I going to stay relevant in the 21st century? The future of community bookstores needs to be redefined. They recognize that the importance of a bookstore is as a community place. It's um, in having a curatorial role. What is part of Kepler's 2020 is the following. Number one, we are transferring Kepler's excellent awards-winning events program and community relations program into a non-profit organization. That makes that something that's a tax-deductible way to invest in one's community. Number two thing we're going to do is we're going to make the bookstore better. Even the for-profit retail bookstore needs to be restructured and it needs to be managed as a community-owned and a community-operated asset. And number three, we are embracing all the major trends that are going on in the publishing industry that bookstores like you know many other bookstores that we know have struggled to embrace so far self-publishing technology ebooks i would love 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 to be the first bookstore in the country to sell the kindle or to give the kindle away I, do, I think this is a very historical and, and actually seminal moment what it comes down to is you're really building community that's you know what Kepler's 2020 is about. It's about getting ahead of the curve. It's about redefining the future. I think that Kepler's can be a model that can be followed by hundreds of other community bookstores throughout the country and indeed throughout the uh, the Western world. And it's just it's exciting. You see kind of what the future can be.